Now, if you're like me, you probably have dozens of these partially near empty rolls of filament that you just refuse to get rid of because I'm sure there's some kind of project out there that we're gonna end up being able to use these for. And today is the day. And what I'm talking about are printing a bunch of these little nibs that you can use to friction weld different 3D printed parts together. Now, this concept isn't entirely new. And in fact, if I remember correctly, I think 3D Printing Nerd did a video on this ages ago that I remember watching and I've never tried it out. And just recently I saw a video over on TikTok by the Mystic Mechanic that was showing how he created these files that easily attach to your Dremel to do this welding technique with some of this leftover filament. So I've gone and 3D printed a bunch of these that we can then go and test here on my Neptune 4 Plus 3D printers. And the best part about this again is you don't need a whole heck of a lot of filament at all to print these. And if you really wanted to, you could bundle up a whole bunch of them, throw down a brim and start printing these in mass to really use up a lot of those spools of filament. Also a quick note, he had mentioned that he liked printing his upside down with the tips on the bed. I was not having a lot of success getting that to print properly on basically any 3D printer that I have, even with the brim, it was keep, kept coming loose. So I ended up flipping them over, no supports on this and just it, printing it on the back side there, the fattest side possible. And again, using some brims and it all printed great. Now I already see you in the comments saying, well, I could just use a soldering iron to achieve the same results and you're more than likely correct. Or I can use a 3D printing pen to achieve the same results. And again, you're more than likely correct. There's no one way to go about solving this issue of combining prints together. Whatever works best for you is gonna work best for you. I'm just interested in testing it out and seeing what I like and sharing my results with all of you. Uh, in the past, I've definitely used the soldering iron technique to help really smooth out some of the seam lines between 3D printed joints. I've also used 3D printed pens to help fill large gaps. And I think this is where the 3D printing pen is gonna excel over something like this with the friction welding of more or less melting down the plastic into each other. Also, if you don't have anything to test this out on and you want a test piece to try it out on, and I highly recommend testing it out before running and doing this on anything official that you're trying to work with, I have created this very basic file set of tests that I've used in the past here. In Tinkercad, it's just some basic blocks that you can combine together, and there's little even pegs if you wanted to add a little bit of rigidity in between them to help keep them in place while you're attempting to do this or just snap them off inside the hole there. And speaking of 3D modeling, I wanted to attempt to make my own version of these little pegs, one that was similar to what they had designed as well as one that was just completely thicker for some of those larger seam areas as well as thinner for any of those more finely detailed areas that you're just trying to more closely connect. And to do this, I went into Shaper 3D on my iPad and used some of the basic tools to just extrude some shapes. And these pegs are even easier to design multiple options for them using the lathe tool and Nomad Sculpt. However, the one big downside of that tool is there's no way to set precise measurements. So I can't tell exactly how thick or tall these particular models are that I'm designing here in the tool. If you have any tips on how to do that in Nomad, let me know in the comments down below because I'd love to hear how to do it. But now after printing an absolute ton of these here, I'm I'm now thinking I should be trying to 3D print golf tees. <laughs> this is essentially what we're looking at here is just a slightly wider base for the top that I could stick into the ground to support a golf ball. And here's my variation of those pegs. One that's really thin, one that's very similar to the original model there, and then one that's fatter for those large areas. I've also printed these in a ton of different colors depending on the project that I might be working on. I can try and match that particular filament and then use that. One other thing to note is you'll definitely want to be using PLA for this. I don't think ABS or PETG would necessarily work well for friction welding. You're probably going to need to get those going at a super high speed for them to melt properly. So the other obvious thing that you're going to need is some kind of rotary tool. I'm using a Dremel. This is, I don't know which version this is, the Dremel 4000. I've had it for years now. It's a great Dremel, has served me extremely well. I also have the flex shaft attachment on this. Also, this is like my number one tool in my shop. I basically use this for almost every single print project, especially the sanding drum and the flex shaft here to be able to easily maneuver this and smooth things out. So what you'll wanna do is remove any sort of top mounted attachment. You basically just want the bare bones bit here at the bottom. 
You can then take one of your printed tools and slide it right on top of that. It should be a, a snug fit. And then you can power it up. I honestly have no idea what speed we're gonna wanna set this on. Mine goes from, I think, five all the way up to 30 here, or maybe even higher than that. Maybe it's, yeah, 35, I think is the max speed that this will go. We're gonna start things out, I probably around 15, and then work our way up. And honestly, no idea what I'm doing here, applying a little bit of pressure along the seam at that 15 speed. It's it's definitely a raised seam line here. So if this is the exterior of your print, you definitely wanna try and smooth that out as much as possible. And again, it was just applying a little bit of pressure along that seam line while just running basically straight down. Uh, didn't apply anything on the back just so that we could see how solid this is. It definitely feels firm and I'm 99% sure with a little bit of pressure. Oh, look at that. I thought it was just gonna snap, but it's, it definitely has melted the two together. That's, I gotta have to wiggle this a bit. You're also gonna run through these nubs pretty quickly here, so you'll definitely wanna be printing a good number of them. And one of the coolest parts is, once you're done with this, you can just pop it off here and then throw it out. <laughs> yeah, so that really thin one that I thought I could use to fill some of the thinner seam lines just immediately snapped at the top there. So I've either got to go directly straight down and not angle it, or I don't know, maybe just scrap this one entirely. That surprisingly worked really well with the really thin tip going straight down and applying a little bit of pressure. It's definitely going to take a little bit of practice to get a really clean seam, but this was so much smoother than the original red side where it more or less just kind of created a small cavern that it filled between the two white parts of this print. Uh, also, you'll see some really big divot parts where I rested for too long and it just kind of sank into there, it depressed ever so slightly. And now that I've got both sides, this is, <laughs> this is really solid. There we go. <laughs> a little bit of pressure and it was able to break. This was the best one yet and I ended up using the flat nibs at 25 speed setting there and going straight down and kind of going in a back and forth or circular motion, lightly pressing across each seam and it was relatively smooth. There are definitely some bits that I'm gonna have to sand off, but overall, this was the cleanest so far when it came to these and other than my print <laughs> snapping in half there, I think this was some old filament and uh, this is a really nice seam join here using this method. And since I've had a little bit of practice, let's take one of these Scarlet Witch busts. I think this was from Eastman that I printed on one of my Neptune 4 printers, or maybe it was the Neptune 3. I can't quite remember, but the base isn't connected and I want to weld the seam lines here on the underside directly to the model. Also, I figured this would be a pretty good test since it's not a flat straight seam. It's gonna be a little bit more technical and challenging for me to actually try and weld together, which is more than likely what you'd actually be doing with some of your print projects. That did not work as intended. <laughs> I definitely ended up digging more. I basically just dremeled straight into the bottom of this with those 3D printed bits at this point here. I, I don't know what was going on. Maybe the bottom of this is really thin. So maybe that's another thing to consider is how many walls or layers your print has, because it's gonna easily purge through any of those thinner models there and just cause some of these larger gaps and openings. Thankfully on the underside, it is it is secured together here, uh, but it is definitely pretty ugly on the bottom. So definitely a lot of practice and control. Now let's be honest here, the real reason why I'm very interested in this project is because I'm gonna be breaking back out a really large outstanding project that I have yet to complete or even finish printing, let's be honest with that. But here we're looking at a leg of a large Magneto statue. And you can see in some areas where I've used a soldering iron to help try and weld some of these parts together. And it's not entirely clean. Like it's definitely not clean at all. So it, it can't get any worse than what I've already done here. And I've three glooped a lot of the parts together. So that's already helping with the adhesion promotion between the three printed parts. But I've already had some of the limbs that have fallen over and split. So what I wanna do is just really make sure all these seams are really nice and secure and I'm gonna use these welding tips. 
This is by no means perfect, but it's definitely added some rigidity here to the seams of these multi parts here for this one large leg piece. Now, I also wanted to take a moment to say thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of the Elegoo Neptune 4 3D printers that I used for these 3D prints in this video here. If you're interested in an affordable, fast 3D printer, the Elegoo Neptune 4 might be the perfect option for you. And I also have a video coming up here soon on the brand new Elegoo Jupiter SE. And if you're looking for more details about any of Elegoo's products, you'll find links to those down below. Like I mentioned, this might not be the perfect solution for welding your 3D printed parts together, but it's another tool for you to try out if you haven't already tried this so far. And it also gives you an excuse to use up some of those extra rolls of filament that I know you have laying around, sitting on your desks, maybe it's on the floor. I have so many just laying around here that I just need to run a constant amount of these printing just so I can have these to use for the rest of this large project here. I also want to take a moment to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings, like the settings that I use for my Neptune 4 3D printers, you can find those down below. But what sort of tips do you have around friction welding? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, if there are better options out there. And maybe it's a combination of all of these, using the 3D pen to fill gaps, the welding technique here to get the seams all joined together and then using the soldering iron to help smooth out the joints is definitely an option. And if you're interested in trying out this technique for yourself, I'll have a link to the files that I used in the video down below, a link to electromechanics files, as well as the ones that I've created that you're more than welcome to edit and modify to fit your own needs. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all and I'll see you next time.